Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our summer show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents a new dramatic setting for the immortal Rimsky-Korsakoff music of Scheherazade, starring Gordon McRae and his guest, charming Dorothy Warren Show. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Tonight, the world premiere of a new musical play is brought to you, transcribed by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, you will hear the glorious music of Rimsky-Korsakov presented for the first time as an American light opera by the Messrs. Lawrence and Lee. I shall be Caliph of Samarkand, the most exalted and imperial monarch of the plains of Central Asia, the Sultan Shariar, and Dorothy Warnshold will be Scheherazade. <laughs> came to pass in the 13th year of his reign that the most excellent Sharia, Prince of Samarkand, did proclaim throughout his dominions, yea, even unto the very borders thereof, a festival of 40 days and 40 nights. I command everyone to feast and to sing everywhere in all Samarkand. It's the command of the king, the command of the king, the command of the king, the king, the command. Let us sing for the king, we will sing for the king, we will sing for the king at the kingly command. Shari is a prince of pleasure. Such a symphony for the ear to hear and the eye to see As the feeble can of poor mortal men Never held in sweet memory Abu Hassan. Come, Abu Hassan. Nay, hey, continue your reverie, my friends. Enjoy yourselves. I merely call for my grand vizier, Abu Hassan. I am here, almighty Sharia, prince of the sun and light of the moon, ineffable lord of all the dominions. Yes, 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 I know. Tell me, does the entertainment go well? Throughout your entire land, your people are celebrating. Joy is in every heart. Uh, only one thing troubles them, sire. Oh? They do not know exactly what they are celebrating. 
and we would inquire... Silence! It's not enough that the Sultan of Samarkand commands it? True, Your Majesty. If I order a man's head chopped off, does anyone ask me why? Never, Your Majesty. And if I order my subjects to be happy, who dares to question my imperial command? No one, O oh perfect one. Then I say let happiness prevail. We are happy, sire. <laughs> See how happy I am? <laughs> Nay, Hassan. I know that you are miserable because there is no woman in your house. I have two lovely daughters, Dunyazad and Sherazad. But no wife. Alas for me, my bride has long been the guest of Allah in paradise. You ask why we celebrate, Hassan. This festival honors my wife, my queen, Zobede. Tell me, Hassan, have you ever seen her equal? The olive perfection of her skin, her eyes like polished opals, and her form like the undulating sands of Kokonor. Your majesty is indeed favored among men. My poor Hassan. How empty your life must be. We must find you a wife. I have searched the marketplace. Bah. Such creatures as my Zobede do not dwell among the carts and cabbages in the heat of the noonday sun. These frail creatures, Abu, are night-blooming flowers. And their fragrance must be sought by starlight in the untrodden ways. In the hush of the night there is love, there is love in the silent silver of the moonrise, for the night is the robe of my love, and the wind is her voice murmuring a tune. Will I find her, my lovely, my own? Must I spend endless ages wandering alone? For the glare of the daylight may fright her. Majesty's cousin, Shah Zanan. He lies! Tear out his tongue! No, sire! Mercy! Mercy! This is true, Hassan. The queen has gone. Alas, it is true, O oh perfect one. For months, Zobide has been plotting against you. I was not told. Why was I not told? Who, who would dare to speak out against the king's favorite? Call out the guard! Pursue them! They shall not escape! What is that? That music? Uh, that is the band of musicians which your majesty has ordered to play for this night's entertainment. Let the music cease! Let the instruments be 
be smashed and the players thrown into the dungeon. Oh. The celebration is over. I swear, as I am the Sultan of Samarkand, what has happened this night shall not occur again. Never shall a wife be faithless to Sharia. Your Majesty forswears the company of women? Nay, by the beard of the Prophet, I shall wed every day if I choose. But on the wedding night, the sounding of the twelfth stroke of midnight, each bride shall die. No. This is the oath of Sharia. May Allah be my witness. No queen of Samarkand shall live past the hour of midnight. Oh. Sharia is the prince of sadness. sadness. Hassan. Uh, yes, O oh perfect one. Go fetch me a wife. A wife, Your Majesty? A wife. Who is that? Singing in the courtyard. Is, is, is someone singing? You are pale, Abu. Can it be a relative, perhaps? We, it is difficult to say. A daughter, even. I, I fear it is my Scheherazade. You fear her, son? Only because she might offend your majesty with her ugly face. A few moments ago, you called her lovely. Oh, a joke, oh, perfect one. Scheherazade has the ears of an owl, the face of a bat, the complexion of a decrepit crow. She has the voice of a nightingale. Uh, her only grace. Go bring me this crow of yours, Abu Hassan. Perchance we shall transform her into a bird of paradise. Return to the second act of A Thousand and One Nights in just a moment. Tonight, the Railroad Hour is honored in presenting for a brief message the Honorable James K. Knudsen, member of the Interstate Commerce Commission and a distinguished administrator of the Defense Transportation Administration. Mr. Knudsen. Through service by normal routes has been largely restored on all railroads running through the Kansas-Missouri flood area. Behind that brief announcement is a tremendous job done by the railroads. First, in keeping traffic moving through the use of alternative routes, and then in the quick repair of broken lines and prompt restoration of service. This magnificent rehabilitation job is being carried out by the railroads at their own expense and without financial assistance. It includes not only the repair of tracks, but the rehabilitation of terminals and shops, and of the scores of locomotives and thousands of freight cars caught in the flood waters. The railroads assembled approximately 17,000 high-grade boxcars in the southwest in preparation for the movement of winter wheat. The movement was delayed by heavy rains so that part of the southwestern harvest must be moved at the same time as the crops farther north. Meanwhile, many of the cars assembled were made unusable by the flood. So now, with the car supply thus diminished, railroads must undertake a double task. To carry out that task, as well as to maintain the serviceable car supply and locomotive fleet throughout the nation, the railroads will need steel and other materials for their work of maintenance, repair, and operations. This requirement complements the need for steel to carry out the program of building new freight cars and locomotives which the railroads undertook to meet the demands of, of national defense. This country can have and use no more of anything than it can haul. The great bulk of hauling is done in railroad cars. That's why the Defense Transport Administration continues to urge upon the authorities responsible for allocations of materials that there be no lessening of the flow of materials. Materials essential both for railroad operation and also for the program of increasing railroad capacity as the commercial and defense needs of the nation increase. Here is 
the second act of our Railroad Hour premiere of A Thousand and One Nights, starring Gordon McRae as the Sultan Shariar and Dorothy Warrenshold as the fabulous Scheherazade. Yes, my father. The burden of my years falls upon my white hairs like the rocks of an avalanche. Why are you sad, my father? Have you heard of the terrible oath of our Sultan Shariar? All Samarkand knows. And you know what must happen to his wives precisely at the hour of midnight. I know. Allah, why have you blessed me with a beautiful daughter? Shahrazad, stick out your tongue. Like this? Father, father, try to touch the end of your nose. Can you cross your eyes? Now, 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 scowl. Oh, it is no use. Nothing succeeds in making you ugly, Scheherazade. I would become an old woman overnight if it would make my father happy. Alas, Scheherazade, I fear you will never become an old woman at all. The king wants to marry you. <gasps> And when the marriage feast is over, when the sun has gone into the caverns underneath the earth, I will never see the light of my life again. Do not despair, my father. Shariar has taken an oath by the prophet against all womankind. No bride shall live to see the dawn after her wedding day. And I swear that I shall live to see the glory of another sunrise. Which oath is stronger, the king's... Or mine. Allah shall decide. The king is pleased with his bride. Is he? We know already the pleasantness of her voice. Does the court wish to hear a song from the new queen? Yes. Sing, my love. I do not wish to sing. The king commands you to sing. And the queen refuses to sing. You know my oath. You know how long you shall remain queen. I advise you to sing while there is still breath within you. Will a song spin out the hours of my breathing, Shariar? You dare to call me Shariar? That is your name, and I am your wife. I prefer to be called Oh Perfect One. Pooh, you aren't perfect. You've spilled salad oil all over your tunic, and your turban's on crooked. No one dares speak thus to the king. You shall die. I shall die anyway. Enough! Clear the court, all of you. Take your leave from the banquet hall. The marriage feast is ended. I beseech you, Your Majesty. Who is this child? It is my sister, Dunyazad. Can you deny her the privilege of bidding me a last farewell, O oh, perfect one? Let it be brief. Scheherazade, my sister, I cannot sleep again until you tell me the ending of the story. Not now, little Dunyazad. But I must know how the story ends. Story? Story? What story? Did you not know, Almighty King, that my sister is gifted above all of Alice's creatures in the skill of telling tales? Marvelous, mystical tales, which are almost beyond the power of believing. Oh? I must hear such a tale. Is there time? His Majesty has pressing business at the hour of midnight. That business will be attended to, never fear. But until the stroke of twelve, you will entertain me with one of your marvelous adventures. As you command, O perfect one. Long ago in the city known as Baghdad. Baghdad. Sinbad. First he sailed for the east, then he sailed for the west, seven voyages east, seven voyages west, seven voyages 
pass that the wealthy merchant Sinbad, tiring of his life of luxury and idleness in the city, dipping out a vessel a hundred cubits long and one hundred and fifty cubits high. And Sinbad set his course for the farthest reaches of the ocean of the Indies, where a great storm seized upon his sails and smote his ship upon a rock. And Sinbad deemed that his days had ceased to multiply themselves, until a mighty eagle swept down out of the cloud, grasped Sinbad's collar in his claws, and soared with him across the angry waves. An eagle? Verily did the eagle snatch Sinbad from the jaws of the waves, else would my story be swiftly ended. bottle of glass, which shone with colors which even the rainbow dreams not of. And corked up within the bottle was a genie. A genie? A genie. Was it a good genie or a wicked genie? Oh, you must judge that for yourself, my husband. the genie grow black as a thundercloud, and he leaped in one stride to the peak of a mountain top, and seizing a thunderbolt in each hand, he readied himself to fling the daggers of lightning at poor Sinbad, who dropped to his knees and begged for mercy. What then? What happened then? Sinbad took the bottle of many hues in which he had found the genie imprisoned, and he himself crawled inside the glass drawing the cork in after him. Ingenious. And then? Sinbad opened his mouth to pronounce the magic words which the genie dare not utter. But the sound of their syllables had escaped him. No. He could not remember the magic words. Go on. Continue. What happened then? the seventh and last voyage of Sinbad the Sailor. Stay. What do I see to the east? It is the glow of sunrise, O oh perfect one. Allah, preserve me. I have broken my vow. Nay, my husband. I swore you should die at midnight, but I heard not the striking of the hour. Your tale of Sinbad has bewitched me. Allah has cast this spell upon you, Shariar, to preserve you from your own wickedness. And it is a spell of love. Is it love truly? Or have you made Shariah the captive of your tongue? I am the captive, O Sultan, for I thought to build a bridge of words between us to span the sunset to sunrise. But Allah has built instead a bridge between our hearts. It has been a magical night. But only one night. I decree there shall be a thousand more. A thousand and one nights of such fabulous tales. If you seek for it, the darkness has more to give you, Sharia. In the hush of the night, there is love. There is love in the silent silver of the moonlight. For the night is the robe of my love. 
at you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Our thanks to lovely Dorothy Warnshold, to Jay Novello, Mary Lee Robb, Marvin Miller, and to our entire company. Music for A Thousand and One Nights was by Rimsky Korsakoff. Lyrics and libretto by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by the American Railroads. The recent and unprecedented flood in Kansas and Missouri created an aftermath of damaged homes and destitute people in urgent need of assistance. You can help these fellow countrymen in their time of need through a contribution to your local chapter of the American Red Cross, which is working day and night to alleviate the suffering. Now, here are Gordon McRae and Dorothy Warren Schold again. Gordon, you killed me as the Sultan Shariar. <laughs> well, not quite, Dorothy, and I'm glad. Because we can use you next week, it's the premiere performance of Long Ago, a lovely, nostalgic musical based on Thomas Bailey Aldrich's famous Marjorie Daw. I've just had a peek at the schedule of shows in the weeks ahead, Gordon. I'm terribly excited about them. Well, every Monday night is an opening night, Dorothy, on the show train. For instance, on August 27th, we'll have the world premiere of Danny Friel, a delightful Irish operetta. And on September 3rd, you're going to be Mark Twain for a musical romp called Innocence Abroad. See you back in 1910 next Monday night, Gordon. That's the day, Dorothy, 1910 to be exact. All aboard! Well, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next Monday night and long ago, this is Gordon McRae saying goodbye. Was transcribed in Hollywood. Gordon McRae can be seen in Warner Brothers on Moonlight Bay. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroad. Now stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. Your Monday evening of music continues with the telephone hour on NBC.